welcome to the Lumos Learning Video Sampler for Grade 8. My name is Luis Anthony Ast. I am a professional mathematics tutor, and I'm here to show you how easy math can be. I will be going over select questions from the diagnostic test, and it's provided online and in print form. When each question is presented in the video, I want you to pause it right after the choices of A, B, C, and D are listed. Try to answer the question and then press play to see the correct answer and my explanation. Now, let's get started. Josephine took her sister out to dinner. When the bill came, her sister reminded her that it is customary to tip the server 15% of the bill for satisfactory service. What is a good estimate of the tip if the bill is $24? The approximate tip is going to be $3, which is answer C. Now, what's a very fast way of getting that answer? We want 15% of $24. 10% of anything is very easy to find. If you have a decimal point right there, just scoot over one place, and that would be 10%. So you're going to have $2.40 is 10%. Half of that's going to be 5% value. And if we add that up, 10%, 5%, 15%. Oh, so it's going to be $3 and something. I don't even care about the rest of this because we want the approximate solution. So that's going to be answer C. Three adults take 15 students to an art exhibit. The total amount spent on tickets is $75. Adult tickets are $10 a piece. How much does each student ticket cost? Let's see why the answer needs to be B, $3. It's a rather wordy problem, but don't let that intimidate you. Just do it step by step. We have three adults, and adult tickets cost $10 a piece. So, 3 times 10 is $30. That's the amount of money spent for adult tickets. The total spent was 75 So if you go 75 minus 30, that's 45. That's the money spent for student tickets. And we have 15 students. So just go 45 divided by 15. This is easy to figure out. Just reduce the fraction. There's a 5 in everything. You're going to get 9 divided by 3, which is easy to do. It's 3. So that's why the answer is B. Which fraction is equivalent to 0 0.60. The equivalent fraction is just 3 fifths, choice A. How can we get that? I can rewrite this value as follows. It's 60 over 100. I can reduce this fraction to 6 tenths, which can be reduced even further as 3 fifths. Solve for x in the following equation. Negative 46 equals 8 minus 2x. The answer is going to be 27, which is choice C. Let's go ahead and figure out why. One way students do this is they actually put each of these values in the equation, and when they get a true statement, for example, negative 46 equals negative 46, oh, that's true, then that must be the answer. That's fine, but it's time consuming. You want to work as quickly as possible. So let's try something different. When I tutor students, I stress that if you have an equation, and if you notice that everything is even, for example, then 
just divide through by 2. You get a smaller equation, which is easy to deal with. So let's do that. I'm going to divide everything individually by 2. So you get negative 23 equals 4 minus x. Much easier. Another thing I tell students is that when you're trying to solve for the variable, in this case x, and it has a negative coefficient, this is technically a negative 1, you want it to be positive. And the way we do that is just move this to the other side by doing the opposite operation. So I'm going to add x to both sides of the equation. Cancels over here. I get x minus 23 equals 4. Almost done. My x by itself, this number is in the way, so we're going to add 23 to both sides. That would cancel on one side and put it on the other. Cancels, I get x is equal to 27. Which of the following quantities is equivalent to 40 pounds? I won't reveal the answer right away for this particular problem. What I want to do is convert 40 pounds, that's what LDS stands for, into, well, either tons or ounces. Hmm. To make a conversion, you need a conversion formula. Now here's two of them. 16 ounces is one pound, or 2,000 pounds is equal to one ton. Hmm. Look at this answer. How can 40 pounds be just 0.4 ounces? That's a really tiny amount. It takes 16 ounces to be just one pound, and that's 0.4. So you can actually eliminate B as a choice right away. Let's go ahead and convert our 40 pounds into ounces. Maybe the answer is C. Let's find out. So you start off with 40 pounds. Let's put that over one. I'm going to use what I like to call a conversion fraction. And you get that from the conversion equation. You can write 16 ounces divided by one pound or one pound divided by 16 ounces. It depends on the problem. In this case, since the pounds is the numerator, you want it in the denominator so you can cancel out. So one pound, it's gonna cancel. So 16 ounces needs to be the numerator. When you perform this multiplication, the pounds cancel. 40 times 16 is going to give you 640. The units are ounces. Is that what we can get from one of our choices? And uh, no. So now let's go ahead and convert the 40 pounds to tons. Like before, I'm going to write down 40 pounds over 1 times the conversion fraction. In this case, it's going to be from the second equation. So I'm going to write down 1 ton over 2,000 pounds. It's not the other way around because you want the pounds to cancel. Like this. What are we left with? 40 tons over 2,000. I can reduce this fraction, get rid of some zeros. So I'm going to have 4 over 200. And I can reduce this further. I can just cut everything in half to get 2 over 100 tons. And yes, I can cut this in half again. You can reduce your fraction further, but this is actually in a great form to make it a decimal. So looking at our choices, which one of these is 2 hundredths? Right here. The answer is D. Point J has the coordinates negative 5, comma 6. What are the coordinates of its image if it is reflected in the y-axis? The answer is b, 5, comma 6. 
How can we get this answer? Well, very easily. I recommend you do a quick sketch with some X and Y axes. Plot the point negative 5, 6. You go negative 5 to the left, up 6. That's point J. You want this to be reflected across the Y axis. It's like a mirror image. So the point is going to be just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 past the axis. The coordinates of this point is 5, 6. The chance of snow on Friday is 40%. The chance of snow on Saturday is 20%. What is the probability that it will snow both days? The answer is going to be C, 8%. To figure that out, let's go ahead and write down the 40%. And we want the probability that it occurs on Saturday, which is 20%. So we want the probability of 40% and the 20%. Let's change these to decimals. So you get 0 0.40. And in mathematics, it tends to be multiplication. I can use multiplication symbol or raised dot or parentheses. It doesn't matter. And this is going to be 0 0.20. If you perform this multiplication, you're going to get 0 0.08, which is the decimal form of 8%. That was the last problem for this video. Don't worry. If you visit LumusTestPrep.com, you can find hundreds of additional ones.